Hello, and welcome to Soothing Pod's Sleep Stories. My name is Arif, and today I would like to help you relax and fall asleep guided by my voice and the story you are about to hear. Tonight, I will tell you a story about how the four seasons came to be. But before we start, let's take some time to relax. Make yourself comfortable. Expand your breath as you stretch and relax each muscle. Breathe deeply, inhale, exhale. As you breathe in, feel how your pillow supports you. Sink into it with your weight. Let it take more and more of your body's heaviness or tiredness. And let's be still and quiet for a few seconds longer. Let's take a few deep, calming breaths to relax the body. Breathe in through your nose and exhale through your mouth. Breathe in. Breathe out. One more time. Breathe in. Breathe out. And now, let's begin our story. The legend of why we have four seasons begins with the story of Demeter and Persephone a long time ago in ancient Greece in a world wholly unlike the world today. Back then, winged horses, one-eyed cyclops, and other strange and beautiful creatures freely roamed the earth. It was also during that time that men still believed that gods and goddesses who lived in Mount Olympus ruled the earth. The gods and goddesses looked a lot like humans, but the big difference is that they had exceptional magical abilities, like the power to control the sun, the moon, the waters, and everything else. The gods used these powers to help and sometimes punish the people they ruled over. Among these gods and goddesses was Demeter. Demeter was the goddess of the earth and harvest. Her job was to make sure the soil was fertile so that whatever the people planted grew well. She also made sure that the weather was just right so that essential crops, such as wheat, which people used to make bread, grew well. Demeter took her responsibility seriously. She went out every day 
to make sure that the trees and plants grew healthy and bore a bountiful harvest. If there was any problem, the people knew that they could come directly to her, and Demeter would resolve it right away. She was caring and kind, and because of this, she was very popular among the people of the earth. Demeter loved the mortals, but if there was one person who she loved above everyone else, that was Persephone. Persephone was Demeter's only daughter and her constant companion everywhere she went. Where Demeter is, Persephone would be close behind. Persephone was beautiful in every way you can imagine, befitting a goddess's daughter. She had skin as smooth as porcelain, long, flowing hair that glittered when the sun shone on it, and the reddest lips that put the roses to shame. But more than her physical beauty, she had a kind and caring heart. This quality endeared her to every man and every creature on earth. Persephone had the uncanny ability to make anybody feel happy and at ease around her. She spread light and happiness wherever she went. And so naturally, everybody that she met loved her dearly, but none loved her more than her own mother, Demeter. Demeter liked nothing more than to spend hours in the company of Persephone. They talked about everything, laughed, and sang every song. Demeter loved taking care of Persephone and was a proud mother as she watched Persephone grow into the charming and caring young woman that enchanted everyone and everything around her. Unbeknownst to Demeter, Hades, the god of the underworld, was one of Persephone's most ardent admirers. Her radiance and light fascinated him and he desperately wanted her to be his queen. One day, Persephone was gathering spring flowers with her mother. She sang as she picked the brightly colored flowers from the field, all the while thinking how her mother's face would light up when she gave her the flowers. As Persephone was happily picking flowers in the field, the entrancing smell of the Narcissus flower caught her attention. I must have that flower to give it to my mother, she thought. 
as she followed the flower's scent, which led her far away from the protective gaze of Demeter. She was ecstatic to find out there was a whole field of Narcissus for her to pick. She quickly knelt and picked the Narcissus flowers until she had more than she could carry. However, because she was so preoccupied with picking the Narcissus flowers, she didn't notice that everything around her had suddenly turned eerily quiet. The birds stopped singing, and there was an ominous feel to the wind. Something was going on, but what? When she finally stopped picking the flowers for long enough to notice the strange feeling that was enveloping the field, it was too late. The earth suddenly cracked open, and Hades, the ruler of the underworld, emerged in a black chariot pulled by nine fierce hellhounds. Persephone froze in fear at the sight of Hades in his chariot, and try as she may, she couldn't get on her feet to run. Hades wasted no time, snatched Persephone in his arms, sending the flowers that she had picked flying up in the air. Hades and his hellhound-drawn chariot returned to the underworld, taking Persephone with him. The earth closed as it had opened and left no trace of the terrible thing that had happened, except for the Narcissus flowers scattered in the field. Hades brought Persephone to the underworld, a dark, lonely kingdom that he ruled. As soon as they arrived, he led Persephone to a room filled with gold, jewels, silk, and rows of food-laden tables. Please, don't look at me that way. I will not hurt you while you are under my care. Say that you will be my queen, and I will give you everything that your heart wishes. Hades said, to Persephone. Persephone had heard tales of Hades from her mother, and none of them were pleasant. He could be cruel at times, so she knew that if she were to survive this ordeal, it would be in her best interest not to say anything to anger him. She also knew that if she ate any food from the underworld, she wouldn't be able to return. She just had to play along with Hades and try not to eat while she attempted to figure out the best way to return to her mother. What my heart desires is for you to return me to my mother, Persephone said to Hades. 
trying to sound brave, although he terrified her. Ask me whatever you like but that, my lovely Persephone, don't worry. You will learn to love this place, and maybe in the process, learn to love me. You are free to roam anywhere you please in the underworld, but know now that you can never escape this place, Hades said as he left Persephone alone in her room. Meanwhile, Demeter couldn't do anything but pace around wondering where Persephone was. It was dusk, and there was no sign of her daughter. Demeter looked for her daughter by the pond, in her favorite meadow, even in the hills that she knew Persephone used to frequent, but there was no sign of her. Persephone, Persephone, where are you? Demeter called out to her daughter. But no matter how many times she called her daughter's name, there was no answer. Exhausted, Demeter went home and cried herself to sleep. The next day, she searched for her daughter once more. Demeter searched inside the caves, the rivers, and the meadows. She left no stone unturned, but alas, Persephone was nowhere. I will not rest until I have found my daughter again, she told herself, as she stared absent-mindedly into the horizon. She felt deep in her heart that her daughter was alive and for as long as she had that feeling, she knew that she would find her. Demeter looked for her daughter day in and day out. Because of this, she no longer paid attention to her duties as the goddess of the earth. The soil was no longer fertile and nothing grew well. It alarmed the people because if this situation continued, there could be famine in the land. The people prayed desperately to Demeter, but she was deaf to their pleas. There was only one thing in her mind and her heart and that was to find her daughter. The situation had gotten from bad to worse, and the people's prayers reached Zeus, the king of gods himself. He grew concerned about how Demeter was behaving. It wasn't like the goddess of the earth to abandon her duties. Zeus sent his trusted messenger, Hermes, to find out what happened. Zeus learned from Hermes that Hades had kidnapped Persephone and that Demeter had forsaken all her duties to look for her daughter. Concerned that if this situation continues, the people might starve, Zeus asked Hermes to bring Demeter to him so that he could talk some sense into her. Zeus could not hide his surprise 
when he saw Demeter's state. She had disheveled hair, dirty clothes, and there were dark circles under her eyes. Her eyes lost all its glimmer. She was a shadow of her former self. Demeter, you have abandoned your duties as the goddess of the earth, and you have turned a deaf ear to the people's cries. Go back to your duties once more and restore order to the earth, Zeus said to Demeter gently, as he felt sorry for her. I am looking for my daughter Persephone, and I will only restore the earth if she is returned to my side safely. Tell me where she is, Demeter told Zeus stubbornly, her hands clenched into a fist on her sides. She knew that the king of the gods knew what had happened to her daughter. Zeus knew that there was no reasoning with a mother who was desperate to find her daughter. And so he struck a deal with Demeter. Very well. Hades brought Persephone to his kingdom to be his wife. And, as you know, I rarely interfere, but this situation is different. I will send Hermes to negotiate her release. But you must give me your word that you will restore order to the earth once she is by your side. Demeter stared at Zeus for a few minutes before answering. She was trying to control the rising anger that she felt inside. Persephone was kidnapped, and by Hades of all the gods. When she spoke, her voice was stern but soft. You have my word. As soon as Hades returns Persephone to my side, I will restore the earth to all its glory, Demeter said. Zeus nodded to his right, where Hermes was standing, and with this, the messenger of the gods went to the underworld to negotiate Persephone's release. In the underworld, Persephone's inner light and sunny disposition transformed the sad and gloomy atmosphere of Hades' kingdom. Where there was once barren land, small white flowers grew by the river Styx comforting the lost and confused souls ferried there. Her kind heart even tamed the hellhounds who now followed her everywhere, even if she didn't want to admit it. But Hades' sincerity and patience moved her kind heart, and slowly, she accepted Hades' invitation to explore his kingdom. Her presence alone lighted up the underworld. She missed her mother terribly, but she had enjoyed the company of the god of the underworld, and she was considering becoming the queen of the underworld. Hermes found Persephone sitting with Hades on an elegantly curved couch 
made from the most elegant gold. Hades had a pomegranate in his hand. Persephone, my only love, you have eaten nothing since you came here, and I am distraught that you might fade away if you do not eat. Eat just a little of this delicious fruit, Hades said to Persephone, extending the fruit to her. Persephone felt so hungry that before she realized, she had eaten six pomegranate seeds before returning the fruit to Hades and covering her mouth with her hands. What had she done? Now she had to stay in the underworld forever. Hermes saw what had happened and he knew that if he were to take Persephone with him, he would have to use all his negotiating skills to strike a deal with a cunning and powerful god. Great Hades, he began as he approached him, I am here at Zeus's command to bring back Persephone to her mother. I remind you, it's not a good move to ignore Zeus's commands. I know why you are here, Hermes, Hades replied. He had known from one of his spies that Hermes was on his way to take Persephone away from him. But now that she had eaten the fruit with her own free will, he knew that she had no choice but to return to him. She has eaten six pomegranate seeds of her own free will. I will return Persephone to Demeter for six months each year and for the following six months, she will come to the underworld with me. Hermes knew that this was the best deal that he could get, and so he looked at Persephone and said, Very well, it is a done deal. Come with me, sweet Persephone and I will take you back to Demeter. Hermes said to Persephone as he extended his hand to her. Persephone wasted no time and went with Hermes. When they emerged from the underworld, she saw her mother anxiously waiting for her return. Mother, Persephone cried as she ran into her mother's arms. At last, she reunited with her mother, and she felt so happy. Demeter cried happy tears as she held her daughter tightly in her arms. And as she did, the flowers bloomed in the meadows and the trees all came back to life. The soil was fertile again, and the wheat in the fields miraculously bore fruit. The earth rejoiced with Demeter, and all was well. In between tears, Persephone told her mother how she ate six pomegranate seeds and how she had to come back to the underworld and stay a month for every seed that she ate. And so the four seasons as we know them today came to pass. 
Every fall and winter, the earth is barren and cold, as Demeter mourns Persephone's return to the underworld. And every spring and summer, the flowers bloom, and the earth rejoices at Persephone's return to the earth. And this is the story of how the four seasons came to be. I hope that you enjoyed listening to the story. I'll see you again next time. Good night.